first thing to do is uh, get your dongle connected. Um, so you plug it into the onboard charging port, uh, which is USB-C, um, preferably with the high quality day state cable um, that comes with it. Um, so there you go. Uh, next thing, I'm going to turn the rifle on. Uh, so it should be cocked. Turn to fire and off again. This will bring your uh, screen on. At the other end, got the Daystate dongle, uh, which is also a USB C connective, and then that goes into a USB port, which is just there. That blue light comes on, and that's it. That's your rifle connected to the PC. So this is my desktop. Um, I'm trying to work this at a bit of an angle so I'm not too reflected on the screen. You should be able to see what I'm doing. So down here, I've got my day state control panel. Um, I've got another copy over here, um, but that's for something else. Um, so it's this one, so we double click on that to open. And we get the control panel. So now I've got everything safely saved. Um, what I'm gonna do first is go through um, the firmware. Um, you can download the latest version of the firmware from the Daystate website. Um, it's actually running. I've got it downloaded already. So if I go there, uh, so we want to read firmware version first. Okay, so down the bottom you can see it's flashing. This is version 1.29. Okay, that is the latest version, but I'm going to reload it anyway. So, what I want to do, go to Firmware Update. The program will contain two. You can see them both here. You've got FAC and Export, and you've got sub-12 foot-pound version. Okay, they're both hex files. Don't ask me what a hex file is. I don't know. Um, but if you try and put your FAC Export on a sub-12 rifle, it doesn't work. It just comes up with a, an error. Um, and what you have to do is reload the firmware for the sub-12. Okay, I have tried it, didn't work. Um, it was just to see what would happen. So I'm gonna load up the sub-12, okay, and then click on open. There is a warning telling you you're about to update your firmware um, and not to uh, do, the, do it wrong. Um, and restart the system. So basically you just need to sit with it. Okay, so as soon as you press OK, contacts the bootloader, starts writing the data into the memory. And this takes two or three minutes, tops. Um, there's only 49 files to actually load in at the moment, I think. While it's uploading, you can actually see it says service loader on the rifle. So we're continuing to uh, watch the bar go along now. It's almost finished. It's definitely completed now. You heard the rifle make a buzz. That's switched back to its normal screen now. And you can see it says update completed. Okay. So if we read from the rifle again, uh, by going to device, receive all tabs from device. These may well be what was in it before. However, the best thing to do is actually load the configuration file. Okay, so then you get your original settings, particularly in FAC if they were different. Um, so we're going to load a configuration file. And you can see we've got various ones here that are saved. Um, FAC, again, won't work. This is the original sub-12. This was my sub-12 settings. So if I load my original sub-12 settings again and open. Now that's loaded into the control panel. This isn't on the rifle. So if I was making changes, 
they wouldn't actually be on the rifle yet. What we need to do is go to device and then send all tabs to device. OK, so that's now written these settings to the device. So if I'd have updated anything um, on the sub 12 settings that I can use, that would now be on the rifle uh, and I can still make changes on the rifle. Um, I have seen sometimes the power table not loading up properly on the rifle. Um, this can be done. Um, you just need to redo the individual tabs. OK, so you would read and then save all tabs again. So that's it. Um, there are a number of other things on here. Um, you can get the read status, it tells you where you are. Exit the bootloader, which we don't need to do. Um, you can receive and save the current tab to the device, um, depending on what screen you're on. There are some chronograph things here that um, probably don't need to mess about with on the sub-12, um, unless you're having issues with the chronograph, but it'd be best to be in touch with Daystate before you do those. Um, you can calibrate the touch panel, but mine works just fine and unlock the display. So if you're working on the computer, setting stuff, and you do want to do something on the rifle, you can actually unlock it without pulling the trigger. And that's it. So we've got our new settings on there now. Um, obviously, sub-12 isn't adjustable um, in many ways um, because of what it is. But this, as you saw on the power table, Previously, they were in 5% increments. These are now on the uh, version 1.29 um, are actually much finer. They're in 2 and 3% increments on the power. Um, so you've got 12 settings now there, um, which is good for if you're inside or you want to just adjust a little bit for one pellet. This is much, much finer. Um, the 5% increments was a bit clumsy. So there you have it really. Um, as long as you start with connecting to the rifle, you may need a different communication port, but you'll only have a choice of a few when you start off. Um, connect to the rifle and always read and save your configuration as it is on the rifle before you start. And then you can read your firmware, update your firmware and you can then reload your configuration files. Um, it seems to me to work best if you do a update um, that you actually do it in that order. Um, so save your existing, load your new firmware, and then load the configuration file again. Um, and that seems to be problem free then. Okay, so there you go, guys. I hope that's some help. Um, any questions, drop it in the comments below, I suppose. Cheers, guys.